Okay, good morning. In our last lecture, uh, we have seen what is fault and the types of fault that means symmetrical and unsymmetrical. And then we start with symmetrical fault and symmetrical fault. And we have seen how the symmetrical fault can be handled. And there we mention one method that is per unit method. And also we saw the various steps to solve the symmetrical fault. One thing is first we have to draw the power system single line diagram. Suppose this is generator, then step up transformer, then transmission line, step down transformer and then it may be to load or transmission line like that. So um, this was the first this and from that we have to draw the impedance diagram and then from impedance diagram if we neglect the resistance we can draw the reactance equivalent reactance diagram. Suppose this is generator XG then this is transformer XT1 then it is XT2 XT2 and then from this if short circuit occurred here then we will draw this is our uh, net reactance diagram and we will get a single loop and all these reactants in series and we will take the summation and we will get x equivalent and if it is voltage is E then I fault will be E by X equivalent for Mohn's law. We have seen but today we will see and we have mentioned one thing that is per unit method to solve this. What is per unit method and now today we will see that. Okay. Before starting that, we should kept our attention about the X of alternator. Alternator X and let us see what are that. Any alternator has Three reactors. One is X double dash, X dash, and X or X D. X. What is this? This is sub transient sub transient reactants. This is transient reactance and this is steady state. Steady state reactance. So sub-transient reactance, transient reactance and steady state reactance. Now what is that? Now we have to see the fault current profile. If we see the fault current profile, we will see that in first few cycle, in first few cycle, the current will be first few cycle, the current will rise huge this peak will be maximum. It may be, it may be, there is, it is not mandatory or it, it is not fixed. It will depend on circuit condition, three to four cycle. It is around three to four cycle, the peak of oscillation of the current will maximum, current will be maximum. This period, 3 to 4 cycle is called 
of transient subtransient period from here to another around another more six cycle another six cycle once again it is not fixed it is six it may be a little bit very circuit depend upon circuit condition so another few cycles is called transient period transient period and after that it is steady state steady state period now the circuit will offer the reactance during sub transient period or the alternate reactance during the sub transient period that is called sub transient reactance and it is denoted by x w that's now the alternate reactance during transient period x plus and during steady state period it is x and sometime it is called excess synchronous reactance okay so as i mentioned here it is x so it will be x now here we will see this reactance sub transient reactance is less than this and this reactance is less than this that means we can say x double dash less than x dash and less than x so as this x double dash it is less so current will be high because we know i is equal to e by x if we omit the resistance e by x so if f x less i will be more then gradually the x will be more I will reduce. I will reduce, and the current profile will. Be. Now assume this subtransient period, the current will be more, and our short circuit study actually, what is very important, our short circuit study is within transient period because within this period, the current will be maximum. and the fault mv will be maximum and our protective device should be capable to handle this amount of current if the circuit breaker and other protective device is capable to handle this amount of current obviously they will able to handle this amount of current because it is less obviously they will have able to handle this amount of current so from design point of view short circuit study should keep this focus on sub transient period because we have to know the maximum fault mv and which is in sub transient period so short circuit one thing kept in mind short circuit study is the study of the power system network for the transient period whereas another chapter we will see in later that is load flow study that is under steady state condition this is for at steady state condition we will study kept in mind it is load flow load flow study and here it is short circuit analysis short circuit so short circuit study i want to say this is our focus is on short circuit study so it is under sub transient period it is under load flow study it is under steady state period so keep it in mind now we we uh, focus on so if we we want to take the reactance alternator reactance xd uh, x double dash it is suppose x1 ohm x it is x2 ohm It is x. It is equal to x3 ohm. Now x3 will be get up the next two. X2 will get up the next one. Okay. 
Now, x3 will get at the next one, and x, uh, x3 will get at the next two, and x2 will get at the next one. Now, for our short circuit study, we will consider this x. We will consider this x because this is soft transient reactance. Okay? So, this is our one thing kept in mind. Okay, let's go. So, this is current profile. Current profile, and there uh, around this is the division, trans, sub transient, transient, and steady state. So, our focus is within this period, sub circuit study. Okay? And there is another um, uh, study, the transient analysis of power system. And that is load flow, and that is steady state. Um, uh, in a steady state system, what will be the load, current, power, voltage? That is under load flow study. Okay? We will focus in our short circuit study on sub transient period. So, short question may come that short circuit study is under transient steady state or substantive state. It is substantive state. Okay? So, I can read and one thing kept in this is less than this and this is less than this. So, sorry, it is greater than this, it is greater than this. That means it is the least one and the current will be maximum. Now, um, if you um, uh, see the alternator equivalent circuit, you will see um, in the alternator there will be, in the alternator there will be, if it is alternator, basically it has some, suppose, the alternator equivalent circuit. It is at such transient period, it will be like this XL and X DW X F and x e it is the equivalent circuit of the alternator at at sub transient period now what will be the equivalent circuit of the alternator at transient period it will be like this same x if and x e it will be like this no x dw and what is this okay X L and X E. So here it is seen that this damper winding actually when this uh, current will be suddenly rise. So if the suddenly suddenly rise and that current will be a lagging current and we know the lagging current, in case of lagging current, alternator armature reaction is purely demagnetizing. So, that means demagnetizing, that means the resultant flux will be suddenly reduced. And if the suddenly reduced, so the, as very, at that very fast moment, the flux will not maintain in the air gap. So, the damper winding will fill, there is a huge change of winding and damper winding will come in picture and damper winding will react there. 
and after the oscillation is over the flag will try to maintain the, that will take time that means after three to four cycles the flag will again the, try to maintain so damper winding action will remove and only this two this is field winding and this is uh, field reactance this is armature reaction reactance and this is damper winding reactance so first this will be vanished and next this will be vanished and how they will why this type of um, uh, equivalent circuit i think you uh, have completed this one this thing in your machine classes alternator react reaction but it is and it is also very clear that with the oscillation um, pro current profile the first it will move then it will move and this is it and from this it is clear that it is the maximum value because if we parallel combination of these two and then obviously and this one is more than this and at the parallel combination of three one so it is more than this so this is like that so in next uh, video we will see in the, uh, the par unit method okay bye right. okay mm. in our last class we have seen the reaction various reactants of alternator now let us see about the reactants of transformer and par unit method okay Suppose this is four thousand kVa, eleven kV alternator, three phase, three phase, and its subtransient reactance is ten percent. Here transformer T one, it is a step up, so it is eleven kV. I assume it is 132 kV. It is 132 kV. Here it is once again 132 kV. It is 11 kV. It is 2000 kVa. 2000 kVa and 15% reactance. Its reactance is also 15% and it is 1500 kVa. Okay. Now, one third to kV, 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 eleven kV. Now, if it is like that, okay. Forget about if it is in Ohm. If it is in, if it is in Ohm, and if it is in ten percent percentage. Yet. See that. Okay. In the LT side, if it is 15 ohm and assume that is x01 equals to if only we consider it is reactance, then instead of Z01, we can say it is equals to x01 because if we neglect that resistance so x01 that means 
if we take the transformer the transformer has some reactance in the primary in the 11 kb side and in the secondary in the secondary side there is nothing that means the reactance is referred to as zero mass now what will be it can be z01 no problem it, in that case it will be like this it will be z01 that means overall x01 it is a overall z01 is in compared to 11 kb side or lt side can you say this z01 will be in this side no what it will be if it is 11 by 30 that means it will it is a step up transformer it is a step up transformer and the k is equal to 132 by it is 132 kv so it is k is n2 by n1 or v2 by v1 it is equal to 11 by that means it is 1 2 12 times so k is equal to 2 so if it is exactly it is equivalent to if there is no reactance in the primary and if we transfer the reactance in the HT side, how much it will be? If it is Z02, then it will be K square Z01. Or if only consider about the reactance then it will be k square x01 now can you say this circuit when instead of when we will draw the equivalent circuit that means suppose this is my generator and it's equal it, it is the generator and its equivalent circuit is x is x xd generator and then transformer this is t1 and this is t2 now consider about this t1 can you replace this with the value of x01 or can you replace this x02 can you replace this no its value directly cannot be replaced if it is in ohm and if it is ohm it cannot be because if suppose x01 value is 10 ohm x01 value is 10 ohm then what it will be it will be x02 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 that value will be mm, its value will be k square 144 into x01 that means x01 value is 10 so it will be 144 0 ohm so if we consider its 15 ohm in lt side it will be replaced by 15 ohm if we consider the it will be 1440 ohm then with a single x how can we represent the transformer and that is our main problem to draw a single circuit and that's why what will happen in that case in that case we have to one circuit this and this is this is one circuit and there will be another circuit this is for transform sorry it is xt uh, x t1 lt lt side and, and this is in xg generator and then another circuit it will be like this x t1 x t1 ht side and then it will be transmission line then so for up to these it will be two two low like this it will be two loop. So that means there will be there will be if other other 
there will be separate separate the transformer is separating the circuit and one circuit cannot be derived from this and this problem is removed by using per unit method okay so let us see what is that per unit method and in how that case this 15 whatever may be in per unit method if it is x per unit in lt side that is means it is x per unit in ht side and in that case we can replace the transformer as as a x because this transformer whatever may be lt or ht it is a x because x per unit Okay, so we'll see what is, how it can be. Suppose that per unit method, we have to select two quantity. One is base power. Base power. So is base. You can say is this is this is equal to is equal to it, uh, that is called base KVA base KV base voltage that means V base is equal to base KV. This we will consider because we know the in power system the voltage is in KV and minimum power in KV, not in volt ampere. And then the other two things that is base current, base current. That means I base is equal to I base means V base by K V A by base by K V base. It is in and the I base unit will be in amp. Unit will be in amps. I base in amps. Suppose I base in such and such ampere because it is in KVA, it is in KV. So it will cut and KV KV and ampere it will remain. So I base in ampere. Like from that, from that we can find out Z base, base impedance, base. Impedance, it is equal to base impedance, that means V base, V base means KV base by I base. We know impedance is equal to V by I. Now it is in KV and it is in amps. So it cannot be in ohms. So it is in 1000, then it will volt ampere, then now it base impedance its unit will be in it is in ohm it is in ohm so base impedance kv base by i base into thousand okay like that so from base from base to base quantity it is assumed and these two are derived. It is given. It is derived. This two are derived. Now we will see uh, base impedance. It is a little bit, little bit uh, variation. That means base impedance can be given in power unit. Impedance can be given in percentage reactance. Impedance can be given in value ohms. Now if the impedance is ohm and impedance in percentage and impedance is per unit, 
how the impedance will handle, impedance value will be handled, we will see in later.